You should bring it back to All right. You know, you want to sit beside Who's now? Roy's I do. I'll leave you for this. Ellie's graduation. Graduation. Right, welcome everyone along here today. Two o'clock for uh, meeting. Um, how much quorum? Jane. What's the name? Now, Jane, who did that? Is that you? Possibly was. I thought I'd written with the G. In my union. Yeah, I think the quorum would have it's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No. Oh, then my apologies. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's me that you're speaking. <laughs> so, what do you? Where is yours? I can. Yep. You sit sit out here and be sociable. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, come along and tell you about our Christmas tree project, which is an idea that was initially floated by the Maniataro Business Breakfast Group by uh, um, one or two people there. And then um, we subsequently partnered up with the Maniataro Lions Club because they are a charitable trust. And they also have the manpower to help us bring this project together. Um, so I'm sure many of you are aware of this project, um, but basically what we're looking at doing is putting a five metre tall commercial quality outdoor proper Christmas tree, um, hopefully on the uh, lawn outside the railway station. Um, but would just finalise those details, um, I'm sure we'll find a suitable location for it anyway. Um, so the total cost of the tree, um, by the time you sort of put in a little bit of a contingency, is nearly $20,000, which sounds ridiculous for a Christmas tree. Um, but this one is high quality, it is pre-decorated and comes with lights, um, and it's made for years and years of use. It's held on the ground um, with a thousand litre container of water, so there's no guy ropes or anything like that. Um, and other centres um, throughout New Zealand have used them. I saw a beautiful one in Auckland when I was up there not so long ago, or at Christmas time. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're very, very good quality product. Um, so where we're at with the project at the moment is we're deeply into the fundraising phase, which is part of the reason I'm here. Um, and we've actually um, raised enough money um, to pay a 50% deposit for the tree. And it has been ordered with gold, red and lime coloured baubles. Um, and um, so we're well underway uh, and uh, we've had some generous sponsorship from private um, businesses, and um, and we're going to launch a give a little campaign uh, sometime soon, just to capture those people that would like to give five or ten dollars um, to the cause. Um, it is going to be a key part of um, the 125th celebrations for Ranfurly. So the lighting of the tree will be um, on the Friday night of the weekend um, for those 125th celebrations, which is the beginning of December. Um, now, sorry, I wasn't quite expecting to be speaking here, so please do feel free to answer, ask me questions, um, and I'm sure we have to cover it. That sounds like you've got all on the trial. Mm. Hopefully. <laughs> That's the five metre one. Yeah. Um, we did well with our fundraising and we contemplated getting a slightly larger tree, but the it was disproportionately more money. And also we we're going to start to struggle with things like storage. 
um, and and putting it up as well. And so it was just sort of, yeah, okay, let's just be realistic here. Um, the Lions Club are going to store the tree for us um, when it's not being used. No, we're under control. We don't need us for anything. What was that? Sorry? We don't need us for anything. Money. Just some money. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we applied for a $2,000 grant. I've just, it's been a wee while since I've filled yeah, out the form. That's correct. Yeah. 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 So look, um, uh, it is going to be um, quite beneficial to this area. Um, what I'd like to think is that it will be a catalyst for other projects. And in some ways, it has already started working with the 125th birthday celebrations. Just that feeling of, hey, as a community, we're capable of bringing something like this together as a small community. Um, and I'd like to think that there are other projects that might get underway um, based on the success of this project, which is it's going to happen. Is it, is it one piece or is it? No, it's, it, it's an assembly job. Yeah. Um, we, I think part of the reason I've allowed a bit of a contingency is we may need to get a cherry picker, but there's a lot of people who've been very generous, um, not just not only with their um, with their money, but with uh, in kind mm -hmm. donations. So I'm hoping we can get our cherry picker that way. Jackie B or something. Yeah. Yeah. Looks not too high. You've got to remember all those lines are all buggered. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's I'm sorry, I'm just struggling to make you feel. This all right? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> no, it's nothing to do. It. It's just me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Full of comments before. Yeah. No, it's totally different. So just, just. While Robert gets his computer sorted, um, one of the things that we will be looking at doing is having a tree lighting ceremony and um, with invited guests for part of that. So um, yeah, I'll be sort of putting putting a few invitations out and making it a really neat wee celebration for the community. We've also applied to the Otago Community Trust and the Aotea Gaming Trust, and I'm not too sure how we'll get on, but um, I'll just uh, see that some of those application processes are quite complex. Anything else from anyone else? Becky? No, I do know a bit about it through the business meeting mm -hmm. emails and the 125 year meeting that we had. So, yeah, I, I know about it. Good. Yeah. I don't think I've got any questions for you, well, Duncan. You, no, no, no. Can you go on all right? So the rest of the business community going all right? Um, and outside of the yeah. tree, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've started having our our business meetings at the Miniatoto Cafe, and we've seen a bit of an upswing in, in people coming along. Um, we've got some new people coming along. Um, I I think um, there's a lot of potential for for good things there. Yeah. I've been at four squares opened up again. Yeah, yeah. Up. Um, I 
don't don't know those guys. Um, they're sort of um, they haven't. I might need to pop in and go and see them. But yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's a few like sort of smaller businesses happening, um, perhaps out on farm, that sort of stuff, and um, capturing those people and making sure they're involved is probably our next mission. But but doing really public projects. So the business group was really just set up as an informal networking group um, with no real mission. It's not a legal entity or anything like that. Um, and then it's like, actually, maybe we could do some stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. The new cafe seems to be going right then. Still a bit of stuff. And... Yeah, oh, um, just, uh, I think people enjoy having a nice coffee with their breakfast and that sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah. But it's we've certainly had some new faces along through those meetings. We're having another one next week, next Wednesday, if anyone would like to come along. Um, Stu is pretty good about coming along and giving us an update about council stuff and Tim quite often makes an appearance too. So, right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Good to see you. I hope your treat goes well. Right. Yeah, thank you. Mm. And um, please feel free to let me know if you've got any other questions. Oh, we have someone moving. Apologies, Mr. Stu. Not a bit. Speaker. Right. Yeah. Very good. Um, so can we stand just for a moment? We can do one sort of any type of resonance. Ruckle Carton and uh, Gail McCombie. Thank you. Very much. I have someone move the minutes from the previous meeting to Coo and Fred Record, please. Yeah, I'll do it. Duncan Hell, seconder. Clark Harris, all those in favour? Aye. Against? Everything again. Now, just remind members if they feel they have a conflict of interest, please speak up. Right. Uh, yeah, Rebecca, so we've got the community information grants. Yeah. Who wants to come on? <laughs> there we are. Hello. Sorry, I can't be there in person. I'm in Dunedin today. Can you hear me okay? You can't hear. <laughs> All right, hang on, sorry. Can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, really um, can you hear me now? Hello, hello. <laughs> Test. Testing. <laughs> testing, testing. Hello. Yep, that's much better. Test. Hello, hello. Hello, okay. testing, testing. Testing. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I can't be there with you today. I'm in Dunedin, so um, thank you for letting me zoom in. The um, so we've had that. You'll have just a reminder that you've got fifteen thousand dollars annually to distribute in your community grants pot, and you've got five thousand dollars annually to distribute in your promotions grants. This this is the second round for this financial year, being one one July to thirty June, uh, twenty twenty three. This round, we received one application from the um, from the business association that you've just heard for heard about about the Christmas tree and requesting two thousand dollars. You've got six thousand seven hundred to distribute, so I've recommended that you that you um, that you grant it in full. The only thing that I'd suggest is that we make the resolution subject to um, approval of the final location and, and connection with the Parks Department just so that we can avoid any irrigation issues um, and subject to a health and safety plan. But happy to answer any questions anybody has.
Rebecca. I think that's all right, Rebecca. So we need someone to move. That'd be accepted, please. I'll move that. Mark Harris, seconder, please. Yep. All those in favour? Aye. Right. Against? Gary, thank you. Thank you. Just Thank you, um, a that final, was it was short and sweet. Um, I'll just note there's a funding clinic going to be happening in Renfrewly on the 6th of September. So later in this year, in the room that you guys are in, there will be um, Otago Community Trust, probably Aotearoa Gaming, um, ourselves will be in the Money Toto Trust, will be there to um, give advice to the local community about how to fundraise for various projects. So that's something to watch out for. Yep. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. No, me. That's right. Yes, it's me. All right. Um, so I had a meeting with uh, Carly and Andrew from Fort Nogan. Uh, about the water, the engineers and generators of water. So it was quite a good discussion about uh, the protocols they were going to put in place. They haven't got back to me about it all, but um, I presume they talked to you, were they? No, I don't think well. Actually, purely. And uh, I'm, I left them in no uncertain terms of how I felt and thought they would help their good job at that stage. We're getting the water been substandard, and they did agree with me that uh, the way it had been handled wasn't acceptable. So, and I found I found them very uh, good to work with, and they were approaching, and they were they were looking at making it better. And, and uh, yeah, that was all right. And discussed a bit of a roading stuff while we we're there. Uh, that's just an ongoing thing for the council. Um, I was at a meeting with the Naseby Mountain Biking Group. And uh, what was the name of the dear Clay? Craig. Craig. Craig from on the road. Craig. Yeah, she was yeah. there, so we, there was a and Paul Hart was there from Earnslaw one about um, the biking in the forest and the biking around the water race and uh, people's responsibilities. Um, really who was allowed access, where they're allowed access. Uh, about the more threats getting made and about where they could apply for funding. And uh, I was going to ask about because I want to put a pamphlet out those we not the pamphlet the the map on the on the pad on the cloth thing then uh, I just wanted to uh, Hallie Mason is she the lady to talk about that for uh, for the funding through the council or that a grant yeah a grant because we've done some for the nice the information centre haven't we with pamphlets. Is that the same sort of thing for them to get involved with? I can forget Patrick Dillon. Uh, yeah, the lead in that space. Yeah, I yeah. have idea was going to get in touch with him. Is that the right person to go through? Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Um, but we're talking about that, about uh, and track maintenance. So are talking 20,000 for track maintenance. Um, the forestry are trying to do less tracks, make less track maintenance. Um, do you all know a bit about it? You spent a bit of a time up there? Mm -hmm. Because um, it's quite, it's, 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 hey, there's 50 tracks. Was, no, plus, probably. Plus, yeah. yeah. So the, they're at the, this stage mapping them all and working out which one's the most important. And there was a quite a discussion with the irrigation and their race about their access on the race. And um, it was expected an event of how to get around the race, um, with particular kids on the irrigation race. Um, I went to the Idaburn Water Users Group meeting. Uh, Paul Green. Very interesting. Um, but they're talking about plantings, uh, native plantings. They're talking about black sides. They're talking about drought, um, willow trees. And they just got started and got mm -hmm. it going. They had the regional council. They're talking about um, the willow trees and the uh, Creeks and about what's going to happen with them, gravel removal, another contentious issue. 
the farmers and regional council. Um, and they're having another meeting like next month. It's up, um, so I had to catch up with James Patterson Rears Bridge. Um, he seems quite happy. He told me there's a clause in his contract that they can take the bridge away in a major. That's that's a clause in any yeah. um, higher agreement from Waka Kasahi for uh, Bailey Bridge. Yep, and he said he never ever thought and thought they had all that stuff in Gisborne. He was very worried for a few weeks, so going to ring him up and say we can't get We were a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he's still trying to find out about um, the bridge strategy, and I said, well, it's coming. I said, I can't tell you any more than that. It will turn up in the next few months, I think. The next. Yeah, we're, we're just working around um, council meeting timeframes, but yeah, in the next couple of months. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, like I said, he was very worried for a few weeks. Um, I was at the MIC amalgamation meeting um, for East Side, West Side, White Extension, is it the way they call them, the three of them, going under yeah. the one umbrella. Yeah. Um, so they had Andrew Moffat, he's the CEO of the Pool of Water. He came down and spoke about the amalgamation. And well, what they did at Apua. So at Apua, there were 14 employees, 16,000 hectares of water uh, irrigated. Uh, and of course, they've got their dam, and they own the dam, and they own the fat generation farm. So they get about $4 million a year in extra income. So they were 14 employees, and they were going through a water renewal. They'd just gone through a water renewal, water white renewal. And they said the reason they got it back, they went to. Um, ended up in Byron Court and they had more data and more information about the water than uh, e ECAM, like ones, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And if you know where the pool dam is, yeah. you don't know where it is, Mark. There's a bridge about, what's it called, bridge or something, 20 k's downstream on that main river. And at that river, that bridge, they have to have six cubics of water at all times. And, uh, and it just, just distributes. But the, the data they had showed that before the Apua Dam was built, in the middle of summer, there was no water at the bridge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said it's a major thing. And, uh, and they shut down heat camp. But they, they've only got a six year window before they have to start their water writing. And this same thing's going to happen over here. So the council's got shares in the east side, east side and west side, haven't they? Janice. We've got shares on the east side and the west side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's why I was here. So we've got a uh, we get a proxy proxy form through to for the voting when the voting comes up. May, I think. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth of May here. Yeah, May, yes, so we sent all through. So it was very interesting. He, he spoke very, very well and um made some great comments about uh water renewals and how things were done. And it was very, very interesting about what they've been through in the last few years getting um, their water rights back. Um, I ended up in the sticks the other day. I got a ring from Drew Dundas about the roads. I went up and had a look. I don't know what you can do up there. Uh, when you go to the neighbour and the neighbour's driving the tractor down the road, there's more mud on the road than gravel. And it's a mess. But he said it had been graded on the Tuesday or the Wednesday, and I was up there on the Monday, and I couldn't tell it had been graded a week later. So I don't know if anyone from the council's been up and had a look at the road or engineering about how bad it is. Mark, you, you won't go up there much anymore now, will you? I did. And? Be fair. And I shot across the road. But what the hell's wrong with this bloody truck? Then I looked at the next bit of bloody corrugations and I knew exactly what was wrong. Went up there, I think it was graded between the two times I went up there, well as you say it was hard to tell, but it's just the same old thing. They just pull the potholes in with dirt, two days later they're gone. Mm -hmm. Admittedly the wet weather won't have helped, yeah. it never does on a gravel road, right? but no. it was a bad day I went up it was it's, it's not even the gravel going into the potholes, it's that dusty stuff. Yeah, the dusty yeah. stuff they push across in front of the blade, yeah, it's into the potholes, next yeah. year it's, it's all out again. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. same argument we've had for years and years and years, and nothing happens. Yep. 
So whether or not we need a, the engineer to have a look at some of these roads, um, pool, pool level, mm -hmm. and actually come out and look at a few roads, potholes. And... Yep, so I can talk that very briefly. Yep. And she like, um, so um, we, are, we are, we're heading up Monday next week yep. um, to have a look over that. One of the big challenges is it's due for remetling. Um, and that's the thing you talk about what is getting pushed up and pushed in, but um, it's, there's not a lot of metal left on the road in some of those areas, and it's incredibly challenging around a uh, gravel source. So um, we're working with another agency around um, there's some gravel extraction locations. Um, we're just trying to make contact around that, but again, um, talking and testing and doing whatever we can with some um, uh, farmer and also making contact with any other farm and different things in the area trying to source some gravel um because that's the biggest challenge if mm. some good gravel can go down on that um it's going to alleviate all of those issues and concerns and then the grader actually has something to pull up and put down so um uh, it's it, yeah we are incredibly challenged with um the lack of gravel source through that area as well so um it is a priority and we are working on it but it's um it's all around finding that gravel source there's a couple of pits up there, isn't it? Dock. Yeah. Um, so we're just trying to work with that. It's a bit of the empty just about, I suppose. Um, and, and managing cut distances with that, because it's um, back to some of our other pits, it's a 100k round trip yeah. and managing cost against yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that is incredibly challenging and it's quite a fine line. To be fair, you never got a win on it, because last time we had this conversation was years ago. So, Person was moaning and groaning about it, and then after the raid was well, I got another phone call saying the buddy rocks were banging, buggering up the tide. But you just don't win sometimes, I'm like, yeah, yeah well, the thing is, the grader went up there, and like mm. two or three days later, you didn't know the grader. Uh, a lot of other councils, like uh, not councils, so um, Whitestone Road, they use a blade called Sandvik blade. Have you ever heard of them? And because the council buy the blades, do we? Right. So I don't know why aren't we buying these blades? If you, you know, it's, that, it's got a ball like a golf club on it, and they spin around and around, and they break through the crust, and they break through the corrugations, and they break through the potholes, and oh, they yeah. pull. It's, it's like a, it's like having a chisel plow yeah. and ripping it up. Because maybe putting gravel on top of that road is a waste of time without actually ripping it up first mm -hmm. and getting it to bind. Because yeah. um, they used to have one grave here with those sandpicks on it. And I was sort of do it. it did a better job in other grades. But whether or not that's a discussion you have with the full Hogan engineer, and I think we will I'll bring it up. Yeah, thank you. Because yeah. lots of belts and rain out here, they get done fully regularly. Yeah. And I don't think it's just dragging dust into the corrugations and into the potholes. And if you're going to share rain overnight, it just tends to suit you. Yeah. Yeah. The first couple of cars or trucks through here blows it out and take back where you start it from. I sent you a photo on channel about Channel Road just before. Yep. All right. Um, the other thing was going on about with the corrugations and that. And they're just filling, like you say, holes um, mm. with dust. The other one was about the road because the likes of the regularity, some roads are graded. Um, Reserve Road, the farmers have to pay for it themselves. Still, I gather. Yes. Well, they were still paying for it. And the, the, four, the four farms on there, the four farmers down there. Yeah, no houses on. No houses, but there's wool sheds. There's one wool shed. One wool shed. Yeah. And but there's farm, there's farm for access. Yep. Right. Uh, then right. you get the likes of um, Laws Road at Wedderburn. There's absolutely yeah. nothing on it, and the grader goes up. There's just dirt on there. It's, well, it's got gravel on it. Wedderburn Dam Road gets graded, and there's nothing up there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a bit of priority about. What could be graded and what should be graded, um, as in the frequency. Um, but I drove down Wilson Road the other day, and you couldn't fault the road how good it was graded you know, and metal. It's just all these ongoing things when we're talking about costs, and we were we were actually grading. Mm -hmm. Whereas Allison Lane is a more of a it's more of a well used road, and so no. yeah. Um... There's a fair bit of traffic on that at times. Yeah. A lot of it's going, it's swinging off up towards Redbird, swinging off towards Emmerburn, and Paul Carrier straight through here towards. And it's just getting the shape in some places where mm -hmm. a lot of these roads, um, the one lane roads, because of, because of the shoulder shape, they, they get quite steep. 
Um, that's my moan about the roads for the next month, as usual. Um, I caught up with Stuart Patterson, but I didn't catch up with again. He was talking about going to their final um, shaping of that ground at the hospital. I see there's some more work being done there. I presume that's the final. Uh, uh, it's not quite the final, I don't think, but they just. I see it's been started up and getting big built, so they just wanted them out of there. They might do a bit of shaping up later on. But it's most of the stuff looks like it's been sewed out. Yep. But that's where they're talking about building those units, aren't they? Yep, all in and around through there. They've got, um, got, got someone coming down that's built them for the target or somewhere. Mm. So they're looking at them pretty thoroughly because they won't build them all at once. It will have to be a program thing. They've got to make sure there's room and you know, where they're going to put them. In. These are sort of mine power units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, once again, I might say it'd be a good thing for the town. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got all the facilities. And mm. it's, it might have to be a 10 year or even 15 year stay. I think they're always there for later on, aren't they? Mm. Um, one other thing I've got a question. But we're having all these weather events, uh, and you look up in Auckland and Wellington, what's going on? Rain everywhere. And down here, are there any uh, provisions now? Because, like, uh, and the place that comes to mind, mind is Naseby. I mean, there's houses built on it, sides of hills, all sorts of stuff. Are we looking at where we're building houses, particularly Naseby? The likes of Peter R down by Creeks, so the new subdivision in Naseby at the Hogburn, and there's a fairly wild creek behind there at times. I see there's a um, a new right there by the Hogburn Bridge, Janice. That's who there's someone's building a building right beside the Hogburn Creek, half on a, on a stock bank. I see the pegs or the earth all stripped out this morning when we passed. So, but, but, but do we have a provision about where we're going to build in the future? Are we looking at it now? Or? Yes, we do. Um, I'm going to check that one out. Um, so the district plan shows. Hazard areas like floods and the hot burn is one of those, which is why I'll have a look. Um, so you can't build on a hazard area without a resource consent for non-complying activity and have to address that you can mitigate, etc. Um, so that's what we have in existence now, and that tends to be mapped on what we know from the past. But when we go through spatial planning exercises, we have a lot at um, mostly at hazards. Yeah. In some areas where there are known hazards, we have to do, and we haven't been in this situation yet, but we have to do what is known as managed retreat, and that is um, over time you can't have any more building there and you can't replace buildings there. So just some some councils are addressing that quite actively now, um, but it is quite challenging because as soon as you put restrictions over somebody's land for what may happen in the future and you don't have a lot of certainty around it, you're affecting their property values and their ability to do anything. So there's a bit of science needs to go behind it. But yeah, we do look at that through spatial planning and any changes to public district planning. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, it's obviously going to come. These weather events, you know, they're getting yeah. closer and closer and they're getting worse and worse. And the challenge is to know when and how much and what it will look like, and mm -hmm. so that we can put the right provisions in. Because the only two places in the media title will be Naseby, with all those hills and houses, and Peter R down there with the cellar. Yeah, so we've been through the through halls a thousand months. Yeah. That creek, so. Um, and that'll come up. Does that come under the Resource Management Act, or? Yeah, it does. Because we're in the building that sheet, I remember when we filled that hole about 30 years ago. Just so Where's that? Right at the hot room. I've got quite a shot when I drove past. So that's the shed they're building? Oh, yeah, the guys in the building the shed or something. Okay. All right. I will double check that. You haven't got a name I can look at. And who's it? He's got the, he's got the house opposite it. Okay. You talk about it. Thanks. Um, the school storm or once again, I see that it's, it's not much of a rain. It's drawing down there. It's not enough again. I mean, 
But when they do a consent like that for the school stormwater and they put all the stormwater into that creek, do they actually look at the culvert sizes on the way down? Or because it was coming up and near Woodhead's mother's thing, it was coming down along the road. It can't get through the culvert. Um, I followed up on that. I'm aware of it. I'm not sure around the reference process and different things like that, but they are aware of that as part of their sort of upgrade program. You're saying as it keeps raining, it's only going to get worse and worse than there because it's got nowhere to go. Um, also, Gannis supported me a gold star, double gold star invitation for you and Mason, with the community board and members. So, if you can afford it, we're going to work out how many of us are going. It's not till September. September, yeah, September. So, as long as we don't double up. People going from St John's, and so it's uh, since 50 years and it's uh, 75 years of the fire brigade as well. Mm -hmm. So it'd be good if we can all get there. Look, you'll be going with St John's, eh? You going right? Yeah, we have to. But... <laughs> You've got three hits, so we haven't yet. Mm -hmm. I'll fix my drink if you want to fix. And that's me. Move that report be accepted, please. Yeah. All those in favour? Aye. Yes. Very tangled. Members of books. I want to go first. What to report, really? Um, just um, that leap down Stabber Street. Are they going to do anything with that in the foreseeable future? What do you want to meet for? Oh, you might have known something. What place? Well, it's a little lake in the road. It's been there for a fortnight at least. Oh. And all the rest is a cone on it. Yeah. Is it a water main or a table or something? Oh, that's right in the middle of the road. I was just wondering if some bloody big truck goes along there one day and hits it. Is it going to be soft underneath or is it going to be a hole? Or... Which side of the rock? Is the water main on? Yeah. Coming up. Oh, it's on that. Yeah, it's on the left coming up. So is it on the left or the right? Right outside of Harry's house. Well, really right, right, as far as I can see. Yeah. I don't know where it is, but it's certainly coming up. There's definitely water on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, mm. yeah, the water main goes up that side of the street, so mm. must be right on top of it. Mm. Oh, yay. Yeah. I think it's two inches down there. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It just seems like. Oh, oh, that's thought. I thought it would have been off and running quicker than that. But no. What is that tapestry? Mm -hmm. uh, no, apart from that, I haven't had any other complaints from anyone. We've been doing a bit of the lines on our winter crop competition, and we've had more sponsorship this year and more interest, so that's going well. We'll tidy up in a couple of days. We're always giving that. Yeah, the hall. Apart from that, that's about me. Here, Becky. Oh, um, so firstly, I, uh, our meeting that David and I have going to set up for the 29th, confirmed? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have that library. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's going to be like our drop in centre, so to speak, in regards to the swimming pool and library. Kind of for public to come and throw their ideas around, their concerns, their positive comments, and their, you know ideas and whatever. For for that, so you'll be in attendance on a neutral with that, yeah. Starting with well. Yeah, so I've got a few a list of people that are really keen to come. So I'll touch base with them, but we'll put it out there on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and advertise that fact. So if anyone wants to come, that's the 29th of May. Should they all bring one to? We've got the obviously 125 years celebration happening at the end of the year. So there's a huge group of people getting together and meeting quite frequently. So there's quite a like subcommittees that have gone out. So it's it sounds awesome. It's going to be a wicked big thing. But the late night shopping, the Friday night. 
um, Christmas Christmas thing, and then the next day they're going to have a massive big day down at the stadium, and they're going to have games and things on display. The art, uh, one of the buildings on the main street is going to be opened up for an art gallery. There's lots of things happening, and then that night, the Saturday night, they're going to have a big gala. They're going to have um, auctions and and whatever else happening that night. So it sounds really cool. Bands, live music. Yeah, a real big celebration. So on the other side of that, if you've been on social media the last few days, you would see there's a wee group that are just taking some photos around town of things that they'd like to see just tidied up. And it's a, it's a positive thing. Like it's a, they just, you know, the weeds are just taking photos of the weeds, you know, some signages and things like that. They just want Rain Philly to look loved and cared and, you know, like they just want it to look good for people as well. So so that's happening at the moment. So we'll just keep, I'll keep following that, keep going to their meetings. Um, yeah, the school church. Does anyone know, like, it's probably a little bit, I remember it being built, but is the community at all involved in funding for any of that? And looking forward, are we, have they approached us at all or anyone we were to regards of resurfacing it? Well, they talked about putting a turf, uh, no, it was a quarter of a turf on the old tennis courts many years ago, wasn't it? Mm. Janice, can you remember how long that was a long time? And we did at the time, and Stu, it was Stu's idea, he said, put, put, put the money into the turf at the school mm. and extend it, and it was flat out no, that they couldn't put money into the school turf. I'm trying to think who the lady was. So they were surfacing the whole thing. So they're doing one netball court into, I don't think it's Ash Health anymore, I think they're going for a netball surface. And then the rest of the area is getting re turfed But already in just in waiting for the last year, it's gone up hugely and cost-wise. So I've just, I'm not sure, because I've tried to ring Belinda, but she was unavailable to talk to this week. Like they just they're fundraising. They I think they're selling pockets of land to try and make some money because you know they're doing the gym as well mm. up there. Um, so I was just like, do we? I know it is part of the community because I know the hockey club put money into it. But I just yeah, I just don't know. Like, is, is the community thing or? I um, don't really have any detail on yeah. it at all. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, who went It was Alex. Oh, Few years ago, that lady came. There's a lady here, and they're talking about putting the turning, putting the curve down at the old tennis courts down here. And it was Stu. I'm sure it was Stu. Stu, why don't we extend the school one? And mm. The company who was in charge of the counts, who came from the council, but they just said no. Who would that have been? Janice, any idea? It was, oh, it's five, six years ago, easily. I guess with the, the, the LTP process that you're going to go through, mm. one of the things the parks will be looking at is the, the tennis courts down at the stadium and the netball courts down there because they're certainly not fit to play on. Um, so whether, I'm just throwing it out there, so whether the cost of, of whatever to do down there, but the issue is, is can it be spent over right. on the, on the, at the school? That would be a, question for finance. And we'd probably need to check what's currently in the LTP. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the good thing to bring up now, Vicky, and when the LTP's coming up, is there's yeah. money to land and we are allowed to do it. Yeah, well, it gets used by so many, like, it's the cricket, it's the hockey, it's the netball, it's, and, and the kids in the school, you know, obviously mm. daily. It's such a fantastic facility. There's lots of groundwork that they need to do to make it better because the turf that they laid down hasn't lasted because of drainage issues and whatnot. But it's a it's a pretty cool area mm. that they're going to be doing. So and I know that they're struggling funding wise. So they've actually started a project. The the yeah, yeah. so or started fundraising. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Fundraising at the moment. Yeah, I think. So yeah. that, which club is it? So no, this is the school. It is the school. The school. Okay. Yeah. 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 You get right. you get hockey, you get all sorts of stuff laid up there during the week. Yeah. And, and they were, I know and they, they will come to the club and ask for money to go towards, you know, because it is a community facility on school grounds. But yeah, I just don't know. 
I wish I'd talked to Belinda before the meeting, but I couldn't catch her at the right time. So I oh, will see if we can yeah. understand that a wee bit better. We, or it might be that you can the um memorandum of understanding and yeah. things mm -hmm. like that. You just don't want it to turn up as a log. No, so no, that would be true. Oh my god, turn into the log there. You don't want to know. It was a lot of fun while it was going on. You had to be like, it wasn't school board, but they Yes, I was, and I'm doing my best to try and remember this. I think I might have even been on here with it. Yeah, we're awesome in the library. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, and just lastly, with the NASB biking, like, we're obviously cross over a lot with that, but um, the Sampa area, you know, in Sampa, like that's behind the curling rink and the luge area. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's the only place in the forest that never gets shut down in summer. So if the forest is closed, the Sampa is always open for mountain mm -hmm. bikers, walkers, recreational dogs, whatever. The part of the forestry, obviously, is it's a working forest and they're saying that they're going to cut it down. So the the proposal of people are why they're cutting it down. It's actually there's nothing viable in there for them to log. Uh, What's their reason behind logging it or cutting it down? They're not cutting it down, they're making so there's no more tax bills at the moment. They want all their facts they got, you know, marked, GPS named, etc. They they want to they want to rename some of the tracks into more historical names. Not, not like you're talking like, above the, the Above the irrigation yeah, no, I'm talking about like the sand pit. So, Just well, the sand pit, I think it's going to get come under the same thing. Yeah. Like there's one called Hippies Highway. Yeah, that's all up above. Yeah, but they're talking yeah. about it, but maybe it be named um, after the Chinese gold mines or something like that. Things like that. They're looking yeah. at changing it, fixing up and getting it so everyone's on the same page. And the people are going that way and people are going that way. There's a lot of accidents up there, as that's you will know. <laughs> I bet Steele, I bet Tony Steele didn't think it was. He just says the road better. No, it was more the concern of the sand pit, like just, yeah, when that's, Ernsor is saying that that's the next part that they're going to be working with. Yep. As the, yeah, they're like, well, where are we going to go in the summer? When you shut the forest for wind and fire, which is probably understandable, why that little area? And what happens with the winter luge when the trees are not there? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's all going up. They haven't. That's, oh that, that's why they're having a the meeting, mm. getting everyone on the same page, mm. doing the same thing, instead of people just going out. And, mm. Well, there's a group of guys who goes and picks up tracks, mm. right? And you know, Brent Cunningham, mm -hmm. go and look at his face. Someone, someone pruned the gorse bushes and the broom bushes back, but they left a bit about that much sticking out. Mm. Things like that. So, mm -hmm. just, like Paul says, when people are up there working in the forest, we, we want to know they're there, mm -hmm. or we want to know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally understand yeah. that, yeah. Um, just tidying up tracks. We're going to tidy up a few tracks around the walking race, so you're a bit safer. Mm -hmm. That one that comes down, like the culprit dam, this one comes down, the, mm -hmm. so we don't want them coming down there. Someone ended up in the middle of the south side. That would have been pretty, wouldn't it? There's no braiding, like there's no yeah, there's a grill there. there is a grill. A little kid would go through the grill. Mm -hmm. new grill going on. They, they, so they're just trying to get everyone on the same page yeah. and doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, it's like the um, pamphlets that we put in those weeks. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good space. Mm -hmm. But right. I think the sand is going to come into the same rules mm -hmm. just coming. Mm -hmm. Won't mind that, will you? No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. That's fine. And that's me. I'm done. <laughs> Duncan? Uh, I've got too much either, but um, other than the fact it's been a real good autumn for change. Uh, Cockies are pretty happy. Um, Goff Road up here, I had a couple of people one last week, one a few weeks ago, talking to me about it. And we go past the LA gas station and then you turn, you get the giveaway sign, you turn it left and right fairly or right up towards towards Alex. Um, there's a giveaway sign there. 
they had a train, was a local pulled out in front of them, and they, they bumped cars. There was no hurt. There was not a lot of damage done. Um, there was a local that knew the corner, and he pulled out through the giveaway sign. Uh, I don't know how we get on maybe getting a stop sign put there. I know the cops. I went to three friends in about 18 months there, and um, the cop at the time from Oma Cow said that they were trying to get a cop I think he was trying to get a stop sign put there. And all of a sudden, there's quite a bit of work going on. They put the lights in. Oh, shit, this is good. There's going to be a stop sign go there, and they put two goodbye signs in. Um, I go through that corner a few times a day, a couple of times a day, and had people calling out in front of me. One guy uh, told me that he had the right of way because I was coming off gravel. He was turning, I was going straight through. Um, so there's that one. And the other one, a bit of a concern, is the rail trail um, where the rail trail crosses roads. I've had to stop for people on the Ellison Lane one. My brother stopped, had to stop for one, and he said he was about five metres away from this woman on the bike, and she, she still hasn't seen him. Yeah, well, Jane let him in and picked up four of them at the Middle March one. Yeah. I saw them coming down the road, but she didn't. And I, at the last minute, I said, they're not going to stop. We were right over the gravel. And they looked they look pissed off at us. <laughs> And yeah. the, the giveaway signs are just stupid little. They're, little, they're, they're low, just right? weird. They're not the same yeah. size as a road giveaway. No, they're not. And the big, I don't. They just, they just ride straight across. Yeah, whether they can put a, something, a bit of a zigzag or something, where they've actually got to get off the bike and push it through, or slow right down. Mm -hmm. and through. Mm -hmm. They do. They built one up here. Well, further that can go. Is was at the rail, rail trust or something meeting. Um, they yeah. spoke about the exact same thing, yeah. particularly the one at the Ida Bird Dam, where they yeah. play chicken with trucks. Yeah. And because out here at the, the power board, isn't there a, there's a yeah, board there is. that's, yeah. that's, that's the reason they need on every one, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Well, that's the reason they need there, so they actually have to physically get off their bike and stop and walk their bike across yeah. the road. Yeah. But they don't like, they're like in the nave of Paris, it's guys in the and then the water rates here. We've had that um, discussion before about that stop sign up there, and I just wanted to tell you. It's, I don't think Gough Road is, but the Stewart Road runs from down here up to Ellison Lane and Gough Road. So we've got 85 starts at the uh, large no, group. But to give way and stop those, then there will be that. I'll walk up a conversation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, spoke up there and other things. Yeah, and the friends have been to all been too yeah. going sign. Yeah. Um, Stu Duncan's missus pulled out of there a few years ago, and car pulled out. She was heading back out, out of town. The car went and just pulled out right in front of her. She she got around the other side of it, but it's been someone coming out of the way. Mm. Um, yeah, it's all day every day, and it, the, the visibility is poor there, especially in a car because you're sitting alone. It's better now than it was. Yeah, even even on like, like, two and a Hilux every day, and even sitting on that, you're sitting quite a bit higher, but still, you've really got to look. And motorbike or something is. There you go. Um, and the only other thing I've got is uh, a lot of broom and roads, roadsides around here that never got sprayed. I've been on about that every meeting. But, um, and it's Pretty much drive map at the bad board. Any road has got room on the side of it. Some of them, some of them might be odd bush, some of them are, of course, well, broom both sides. And that's me. Very much. Can I someone move those reports, please? Mark Harris, second, please. Becky, all those in favour? Aye. Mm -hmm. Against? Very confused. Uh, governance report. Okay. This is really good. No, that's not it. I'll take one. Yes. Um, uh, 
paper uh, school submission. I just I just don't. I just don't. I just don't. So that school with Peter Ryan is still just ongoing with the dairy farm. Yeah. And everything. They, they are paying monthly yeah. um, rental for the school, but they are also allowing Tiaki to use it when they want to use it during the day or do whatever. But they also allow the community in there to use it as well. So <laughs> the staff resources at the moment. Is... But it's working all right. Yeah. I see, I went past them. They've got must have been huge plantings at the back of them. If you are, yeah. yes, yes, mm. yeah. They're going to have to bring in a water tank because they thought they could get the water from the uh water race, yeah. Um, but they get shut off apparently during the winter months, mm. so they're going to truck in some water. Um, they did ask could they take water from the patio or water um supply, and I declined that because that was a whole arrangement when Tiaki took on that uh, license to occupy is that they didn't take order from there, but they had to provide their own source of order. Yeah. Everyone quite happy with that? So I'll move that before we accept the breed. Becky, second it. All those in favour? Aye. Yes. Very The date for the next meeting is are you listening? Have you got your pen to write this down? Did you bring the box of beer? No, I think we don't need it. It's the 22nd of June, 2023, at 2 p.m. I mean, we don't need a box of beer. We always need a box of beer. No. I know you're new, but of course. Good light stuff for you. So we do need to move someone to the next story of the public, do we? So if someone moved. A oh, resolution to exclude the public from the rest of the meeting, please. Mark Harris, second it. Mark Howell, favour, aye. Thanks. Done. Thank you. 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 Thank you.